<laughs> Good day and welcome. Uh, I'm honored to have this opportunity to share my thoughts and insights of message queuing. And thank you for being here. Uh, it will be a really fun subject, this message queuing. Humanity has always had a need to communicate. Smoke signals, SMS, phone calls, you name it. And yes, yes there are different ways to communicate between uh, people. There are different ways to communicate within and between IT systems. And one of these ways is to connect a queue between the systems. And although we usually or sometimes associate a queue with something that is slow and boring, everyone has most probably stood lost in the line to a roller coaster. There are some good points too. A healthy queue ensures that you arrive uh, in time in a safe and uh, fair manner. So now play with the idea that someone express build a similar roller coaster just next to the one you're standing in line to, and the queue goes twice as fast. And likewise, IT systems can scale when using message queues and multiple consumers that consumes from this queue. Long-winded, uh, perhaps. Now let's talk about some real-world use cases where, people, where companies are using message queues. On a beautiful day, you go out for a run, and you might be using a workout or running application. Do I have any runners in here? Any people who likes to run? That was not so many. <laughs> when you've completed a run, you might check this app uh, where you're located in the leaderboard, and if you, have set, if you have set a new personal record on the track that you have been running. The IT architecture of Adidas training app um, or workout app, uh, Runtastic, is divided into many different microservices, where one part is responsible for their running activity, one for the leaderboard, and one for the Mac map function. And to be able to handle multiple, multiple users, they are using queues in between all these services. And in Adidas' case, they are using the message queue RabbitMQ. So what do we do then at Cloud MQP? Well, we provide and simplify the operation of RabbitMQ and other message queuing and streaming servers in the cloud. During the Corona COVID-19 pandemic, there, when the gym was closed, there was a big increase in the number of users of individual workout applications. And so, uh, in the amount of data that's, that has to be sent in between those apps uh, or in, within the app. And fortunately for Adidas, the scaling went really smooth just because of this message queues they had. So even if many users completed a run in the exactly same time, they could just, this running activity was just added to the message queue and it could simply be handled by other microservices like the leading board service when convenient. And no microservices blocked other services, even if the number of users became many more in a short period of time. My name is Lovisa. I live in Skellefteå, outside of Skellefteå in Sweden, on the countryside with chickens, children, family, and stuff like that. And in Sweden, we all love queuing. I'm also addicted to kite surfing, and I like running, which is not the best activities at the moment. Uh, but I try, I try to walk at least. <laughs> um, one of the best things I do at work is when I got the opportunity to talk to our customers about how they are using message queues in their architecture. And the stories are uh, pretty similar. The, the message broker is often the backbone of their architecture and uh, the use cases are not too complicated to understand. Here we have an overview of a uh, simplified architecture of how it looks when we have a message broker. We have the um, publisher on the right side who published the message to the message broker. We have the consumer on the that side <laughs> uh, which consumes the messages from the message broker. And the message broker itself is, uh, is the software in wherein the queues are located. Here we have an image scaling example where users can upload a new profile picture. And when they have done that, they could add um, filters to the, this picture or they, they can scale it up or down. And when they are satisfied, they press save. The web app then takes this image, 
add a request to the queue, the image scaling application then takes the request from the queue and scales this selected image. And now we can imagine that a lot of more people are adding a new profile picture at the same time. And the nice thing here is that it's super easy to just add more consumers to consume from this queue when, when the system is under heavy load. Like when more cash cashiers are coming to help you when you, when you are shopping. Many people, that, that's the area where we live in Sweden, <laughs> or where I live. Many people have probably bought or dreamed of buying an apartment or a house. And one of our customers is a property listing platform who, is, who are using message queues exactly the same way as I just described with images. So when a real estate broker adds a new property to this platform, a lot of images always follows. And using message queues enable this uh, real estate brokers to add um, many images, many high resolution images at the same time from many different brokers. No, from many different real estate brokers. And a platform that can then respond quickly instead of perform those in intensive tasks on the spot. Many companies are also backing up databases, and some are backing up thousands of databases, which is a long-running task and intense process, because, um, yeah, especially for those huge databases. And it's a long-running task, too. So what, what we do at, when we back up databases, how, how do you say? Databases, whatever. Uh, so one database request is added to the message queue, and the queue holds on to this message until the database backup service has completed the backup of that specific database, and ha then has acknowledged this task, completed task back to the broker. A majority of our clients are also sending many emails, many thousands of emails, or they are maybe handling an email automation service. One of these companies is called Trust, and they help businesses promote brand visibility. So they match influencer communities and campaigns, which generates an exponential volume of emails, emails they have to send. And Trust, they changed its previous synchronous email system to include a synchronous message queuing. So now they process batches of emails, and with additional consumers, uh, the number of processes can quickly be increased or decreased on demand. Another example is an open source robot farming app uh, called Farmbot, which performs tasks such as watering plants, scaring birds away, taking photos of veggies, turning on lights when they need to do harvest during nighttime, and so on, impressing friends and neighbors. Farmbot uses physical sensors and drivers that require a bridge between the physical garden and the software layer. And a message broker is used in between the different parts uh, of this system. RabbitMQ uh, supports many different types of protocols, where AMQ is the, the AMQ protocol is the default protocol. But here we have an example where they, where they use uh, MQTT in between the device and the web browser. RabbitMQ is also used by many clients as a middleman between microservices. I would say that's the most common use case. Um, one of those companies is Parkster, who, are, who is a parking app company. And they have divided their software into a collection of small isolated services where each service can be deployed and scale as needed and where they can function independent of, each, uh, of other services. And here is the, a developer of, of Parker saying, it's very nice to focus on a specific limited part of the system instead of having to think about the entire system every time you do something new or make changes. As we grow, I think we will benefit even more from this change. By breaking down uh, their code base, software developers gain freedom to choose whatever technology 
that uh, was best for each service. So every microservice can work independently, be maintained by different developer teams, or written in different languages. As, as we can see here, they use Java for one part and Clojure for another. Another thing that is easy managed in RabbitMQ is the routing. It's, it's the RabbitMQ simplifies the routing. And we at CloudMQP, we automatically, automatically set up and configure um, messaging servers. So once this server is up for our customers, we need to notify some related microservices about this successful task. And one of those microservices that we need to notify is the one that uh, connects and collect um, server data, such as CPU and disk space and so on. And then another one that needs to connect and collect data is uh, we want to connect the server that collects RabbitMQ-specific data, like, like queue links and so on. So many consumers can then subscribe to this server-completed message. Uh, which allow new servers to just connect, and then they can take this message and do whatever they want with it. So in our case, we just connect the metrics service, and it starts to receive this message, and it can do whatever it can. Yeah, connect to the new server and start to handle that data. And this is uh, we have built our whole system of microservices. So we just add new services all the time, and it could be integration to Datadog or whatever. Uh, and Adidas also, uh, yeah, there we have a picture of that. Uh, and Adidas take advantage of the same routing. So if they want to build a new heart rate service, which calculate heart rate in some way, they can just connect it. And that service can start to subscribe to messages of the uh, completed running activity. Parkster, the parking app, is the, um, designed to remain operational even if part of the back end is delayed or broken. So you will sadly need to pay your parking even if the payment service is down at the moment. Another example is Rever, who offers a workflow solution for manufacturing. So they let their employees report observation on safety hazards and improvement ideas straight from the factory floor. And they are currently running a three-node cluster just to powering their system and keep its, uh, the scalability uh, reliable. Audit logs, notifications, searches, information, other users, reports, generated in the platform, all of the intelligent insight that lives in a microservice, all of it runs through RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is easy to implement regardless of which language you're using. Here is just an overview of the spread of our 10,500 RabbitMQ servers we are running, what our, a spread of what our customers, what client libraries they are using. I think it's just a fun picture. And two final cases. Uh, to keep up with unpredictable dem uh, demand, multiple re uh, retailers are using message queues to scale their operations, like during peak times, like Black Friday, to ensure that uh, orders are quickly and efficiently, efficiently processed, and to make sure that the website don't crash. And we have taxi and delivery firms that, among other things, are sending GPS pings or GPS data through RabbitMQ. And it's clear to us that um, message queues is used in almost every part of society, from retail to government to education. But now, a short <laughs> um, intro why you not when you should not use a message queue. The important thing is to ask yourself what is the goal with your application? And in most simple cases, you don't, you don't need to use a message broker. And it's easiest to exclude early in the development process. But when you build larger, complex, interconnected systems, or a system or an app that needs to scale quickly, the need will come sooner or later. For, from our experience, uh, we think it's easier to implement a message broker or a message queue in 
immediately than to later add it when a, a lot of data is already flowing and it needs to be done quickly. And ironically, a uh, little extra complexity is often, you, is often needed to handle larger complexity. Uh, and we are world leading hosting provider of RabbitMQ. So come and talk to us if you have any questions. We're also hosting Apache Kafka, Mosquito, and LavinMQ. So we know what we're talking about most of the time. <laughs> Thank you so much.